Good afternoon. I'd like to call a meeting order. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for May 8th, 2013. Any changes to the agenda order? Apparently not. We'll take up the May 14th agenda. Anything on page one? Page two or three? We have four ceremonial items listed. I forget what our quota is for the, is it four in the afternoon and three in the evening? Is that the current quota? Okay. Sorry, it's it's three, but um, we added an extra one from the city manager's office. We'll come back and think about the rest of the agenda, see how long it is. They have been getting a lot longer. Yeah, because they, they have gotten longer. Anything else on page two or three? Page four or five. Page six or seven. Page eight or nine. So on page nine, we're that's the Joint City Council Sarah thing. So we will not have anything left on the agenda. We've got a recommendation to drop that item. So the uh, I have no requ no written requests for for changes. Let's talk about the ceremonials and how long they'll take. Constant guarantees his will be short. Uh, I need to make sure staff talks to Council Member Chu to make sure that his is short and they only have one council member and one person accepting speaking so we don't get multiple in because that doubles the time. And uh, well, I think we can do four as long as they're short. Motion to approve the agenda. Motion is to approve the agenda with whatever little changes we've no made. Ads, right? No ads, just a drop or two. Mr. Wall, you want to speak on that? Um, 3.4, salary setting recommendations. I think you should just get rid of this commission because it's of really no value. I think any type of salary increases should be made by the voters on your ballot initiatives from time to time. Uh, this peddler business, uh, item 4.1, I mentioned it before. There's an issue of lack of sanitation for some of these people that are bringing up uh, imported fruits and vegetables that may contain E. coli. You should be very wary of that since you're basically giving them an open uh, door policy to our neighborhoods. And uh, item 6.1. This business uh, reimbursement for the cost of sidewalk repairs, sir, the sidewalks are against your green vision. Well, it depends on the fact that you want to keep concrete companies employed. That's green vision. That's money. But the amount of water, aggregate water that we lose to sidewalks because of the square mileage of concrete for these things, they need to be impervious or pervious surfaces. I mean, water has to percolate through them. And personally, I could care less having a sidewalk in front of my property, sir. I just soon have people walk out in the street and I have maintained my own property all the way to the curb. I'm not interested in this, this land giveaway to where people that have sidewalks have to assume the liability for the general public to walk past their house. Screw that. Put the public out in the street where they belong. Unless, of course, the city wants to pick up the entire cost of liability associated with sidewalks and pay for sidewalks themselves since you want to have it. So that's enough for this agenda. Thank you. That concludes the public testimony. We have a motion to approve with the changes as noted on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. We'll turn now to the May 21st draft agenda. We probably should start closed session at 9 because we are having the performance review of the independent police auditor on that session. And we may or may not be done with the major cases. 
Anything else on page one? How about page two or three? Page four or five. Mr. Mayor, I have a note about potentially needing sunshine waivers on 3335 and 51. Just thought we might want to check on that. Okay, 33 is uh, Team San Jose performance measures. For, you know, if waiver the 14 days, will we be able to meet the 10 day? Yes, we'll have the report out by Friday. Okay, and 35 is the Athens Administrators for Workers Comp Services. That as well will be out Friday. So the report will be out, okay. And 5.1, the grant for Bay Trail reaches. And it is our goal to have that out with the packet distribution as well. All right, so those three would be out by Friday, so they hit the 10 day mark. Anything else on page uh, six or seven? Or eight? Nothing on nine, I'm looking at. Uh, page 10 or 11, which are the evening agenda. Items it looks like we'll have a couple of items on the agenda plus some ceremonials. We have, okay, we have a motion to approve with the uh, the waivers, the changes. I have no written requests for additions. Mr. Well, you want to speak on this agenda? Item 2.12 should be deferred to the Transportation Environment Committee for further review. I don't particularly like this Coleman Road undercrossing development idea to begin with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Item 3.4, actions related to the marijuana business tax. People down around District 7 are fed up with these marijuana clubs all over First Street. As a matter of fact, uh, even North First Street, South First Street and North First Street. The court has already ruled that you have the ability to regulate these clubs and otherwise tell them to take a flat hike and get out of here. Or you can permit them and squeeze whatever taxpayer dollars you want. But then again, it has to be subtracted to the amount of services that these places uh, generate. Services like police having to come in to deal with a nefarious uh, element. And for the people that say, well, you know, I got to have this stuff or I'm going to die from cancer. Maybe they have an affirmative duty to do so and decrease the surplus population. But in any case, Mr. Mayor, you have the ability now to crush this entity out of the city of San Jose. And as far as uh, the people that really need this drug to make them feel better, fine. They can get a prescription from their doctor and they can go to a pharmacy and get it. But uh, the people that have been down in the Alma uh, Neighborhood Association, they're, they're sick and tired of seeing these uh, marijuana clubs. As a matter of fact, that's a big issue with their uh, County District 2 uh, candidate that they want to select. How to get rid of these things, along with prostitution. And on prostitution, what do you call a hooker, Mr. Mayor, that has an Adam's apple? Okay. That includes public testimony. We have a motion to approve the agenda with the changes in the waivers. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not opposed, that's approved. Next item is B1, an upcoming study session on public safety data application study session for Thursday at 9 a.m. We have a motion to approve the uh, agenda. I just like to uh, have staff be aware that the questions are going to be raised, and maybe these will come up tomorrow uh, when we get into, into the public safety budget. We have tomorrow afternoon on it, but based on what I've heard in the community budget meetings, I'm sure a lot of time is going to be spent on what are we doing now to deal with burglaries, uh, probably questions about robberies since we had a story today about the, the uptick in robberies, although San Jose is not as bad as Oakland and San Francisco, but still we had an uptick uh, recruiting and training. All issues that we've teed up that, you know, if we don't talk about them tomorrow would, uh, I think will be a topic of conversation with the council uh, on Thursday. It's understood, Mr. Mayor. Staff has been advised and is preparing. Okay. We have a motion to approve. One request to speak, Mr. Wall. Yes, on the study session. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to detail out the agenda, to that is to your credit. But what we don't have 
as part and parcel of, of the agenda is a significant statistical analysis, sir, of the effort or the ramifications of Measure B as it has uh, destroyed uh, the police department, basically. Uh, people in district or County District 2 have been complaining left and right about crime. Uh, in my neighborhood yesterday, another citizen had their, win their window broken out of their car. Uh, that followed through last week's at rules, uh, talking about a good San Jose police officer, Mark Stevens, responding on the same type of uh, crime. Sir, uh, the unintended consequences of Measure B has to be ferreted out in these study sessions because there has to be cause and effect for elected leaders pursuing their ministerial duties to put the public at risk. This opens up to the possibility of promiscuous pistol shooting in the community because who wants their house burglarized? I mean, if you've got a 12 gauge shotgun, blow them out the window. We don't want to see that. Well, that doesn't bother me, okay? But I mean, some people it does bother. All right, and this comes to a parcel. You can't hire police officers fast enough. The San Jose Police Department is going to be known regionally as just a training facility for other jurisdictions. Why? Because they can't trust the elected leaders of government to go through with their bargains. You breach contracts as if it were a Kleenex with a snot-filled nose. Okay, you're not to be trusted. And the police know this. The fire department knows this. All city employees know this. And so you have a big trust issue to rebuild. Now it's true, previous councils gave away perks that ran the city into the ground. You opted to correct it, but it's how you went about correcting it is the main issue. And that's the main issue to build trust with fire and police and city employees. Thank you. That includes public testimony. We have a motion to approve the agenda on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That is approved. The next item is in section G, I believe, unless. Public oh, I'm sorry. The public record. I have, have a motion to note and file the public record. Mr. Wall, you want to speak on the public record? Okay. Then uh, we have a motion on the public record. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Now, G, item two and three are bills that are moving through the legislature. First one is AB 532, a whole bunch of co-authors on the local housing trust fund. A motion to approve staff recommendation on that. Mr. Wall. All these housing bills have a common thread. It's the giveaway program of taxpayer monies to people that cannot afford to live in San Jose or other major cities in California, but let's just stick with San Jose. And the elected leaders who kowtow to this element for votes or donations or whatnot, to try to give them a false sense of hope that they're gonna get their slice of the American pie at the taxpayer's expense. But let us not lose discussion about affordable housing. This is a development scam. Only the, really the developers prosper from this because of the perks, sir, that you have incorporated in the municipal code they give them basically permanent waivers for car parks and also a reduction in park fees. Parkland acquisition, for example, to accommodate the vast numbers of people that are going to be hopefully gaining interest into these uh, government slum projects. But let us look to what the ancillary effects are. You have nuisance, reduction of property values for the, whoever owns a private home next to these cursed affordable housing units is gonna lose property value because of the blight. Also, how much property taxes are generated from affordable housing projects? Now you gotta be upfront forth about this, Mr. Mayor, because you're giving away the store with these affordable housing projects. Councilmember Oliverio stated before they pay nothing in property taxes. I've witnessed, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes and bonds that have flown by this council for these cursed projects. So who is currying favor to whom and what is the consideration for that currying of favor? That concludes the public testimony. We have a motion to approve item G2 with staff recommendation, which includes putting on the council agenda for next week. On that motion, all in favor? Okay. Opposed, not opposed, that's approved. Item three is AB 361 by uh, 
Mitchell is principal co-author on a housing bill. And a bunch of other co-authors. Is there a motion on that? We have a motion to approve staff recommendations on that, which includes uh, getting on the council agenda for next week. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, unopposed, that's approved. We have two special events, National Night Out, Community approved. Brainstorming, and various events sponsored by District 4. I'll second with a note. I'll second with a note just to uh, remind staff that usually the National Night Out event itself we do one event thing for everybody so we don't have to have a bunch of memos. Right. This was a sort of slightly different right. than a regular one. But yeah, that will be coming back. Great. Thanks. Okay. So we have a motion to approve both of these special events. Is this City Council sponsored special events on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed? Aye. Those are approved. Last item is the open forum. Mr. Wall. First, I'd like to thank uh, the office city manager. Uh, they paid attention to my commentaries about the fire hazard associated with the property behind Columbus Park between um, West Heading and West Taylor Street. So they're mowing it instead of disking it, which will improve the, uh, the soil quality. And it's probably cheaper than disking and it's more environmental, but they're taking care of it as I speak. So the fire danger is no longer an issue. Now there's something you can make fun of me because I've overlooked this and I have to be held for ridicule when I make a mistake. I reviewed, finally reviewed the organizational structure of the, independent, the Office of the Independent Police Auditor. And Mr. Mayor, your enemies, which I am not one of, can easily make an argument that you support gender-based discrimination. Now why do I say that? Well, this council went out of its way to give I don't know how many merit increases to her retired honor, which is a great person I'd love to have as a neighbor. I don't see those same merit increases going to the attorneys or the auditors, but that's a different issue. But yet when you look at the organizational structure of the Office of the Independent Police Auditor, sir, you see nothing but women. Nothing. Aren't there any male attorneys that know how to, know how to go after good cop or bad cops? Or is it just a good old girl network? Let us not be haste with criticism. Perhaps there isn't any male attorneys that could do this job. But gosh, couldn't she even take one in training? Okay, I mean, you've got what? Supervisor Cortese's daughter up there in the attorney's office. You know, is she gonna get preferential treatment because her daddy is gonna run for mayor? I don't know, and that may be an unfair comment, but let's stick to the issue of gender-based racism. That's serious business, sir. And I don't think you did it intentionally. I don't even think you looked at it, but the facts aren't in. And I don't want your enemies to say you're a bad guy. So I thought I'd tell you about it. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned. <laughs>